so much so that they have transgressed the laws and regulations given in authoritative Shastras. Hiranyakashipu acted in this way, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita. He who discards the scripture's injunctions and acts according to his own whims attains neither perfection, nor happiness, nor the supreme destination. The word Shastra refers to that which controls our activities. We cannot violate or transgress the laws and regulative principles mentioned in the Shastras. Bhagavad Gita repeatedly confirms this. Maybe we could close down the yoga studio first and then the bar. These two things. Hmm? There's a yoga studio going on and the bar is open. So maybe we could just calm down and just listen. I cannot sit in this way or... You can sit in this way, but please be calm and listen. One should understand what is duty and what is not duty by the regu regulations of the scriptures. Knowing such rules and regulations, one should act so that he may gradually be elevated. One should act according to the direction of the Shastra, but the material energy is so powerful that as soon as one becomes materially opulent, he begins to transgress the Shastra laws. As soon as one transgresses the laws of Shastra, he immediately enters upon the path of destruction. Namah Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mahati Bhakti Vedanta Swam Dinam Namaste Saraswati Vam Guru Mahani Prachanya Nervishesha Shri Mahati Pashkati Vizatana Hiranyakashipu thus passed a long time being very much proud of his opulences and transgressing the laws and regulations mentioned in the authoritative Shastras. He was therefore subjected to a curse by the four Kumaras who were great Brahmanas. So this is why Krishna is uh, especially the devotees, very careful to not award to them prominent positions in the material world, great opulence, give them mystic powers, or anything that could tie them to the material world. Demons sometimes, amazingly, even of much less Kaliba as Hiranya Kashipu, they get very temporarily uh, quite some impressive powers and influence over others and dominance in this world. But without any exception, it always ends up in destruction. So they follow the principle. You can reverse it, as Prabhupada said. You come in like a needle and you come out like a plow. That's how devotees generally works. They bow first down, acquire a humble position, ask for blessings, and then According to the blessings given to them, they use this blessing for Krishna's service. And Krishna is always very careful, like a careful father. He gives a five corona to his child and see how he's spending it. Fools and rascals, they come in like a plow and they come out like a needle. To reverse the whole thing. It's always the same process. Fools dash in, but the angels don't dare. So the fools come first. And they dash in. The angels retreat. Oh, pff, this is too heavy. That you can follow like a recent history when Mr. Hitler became prominent in Germany. Uh, there was a certain section of people, they immediately immigrated from that country. They knew all of it. By him being cheered by the majority, you know, the foolishness is always in majority. That's the material world. <laughs> you should not expect knowledge and spiritual understanding being the majority. Even Prabhupada was very realistic. He said, if only one percent of the population becomes Krishna conscious, it will have absolute impact on the rest. So it's not about amount. It's like, what is this I heard recently? Oh, this spiritual leader must be so wonderful. It's not a chance that so many thousands follow him. Hmm. Okay, then according to that judgment, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Hitler was pure devotee, certainly. I mean, and what a followership that was. Just try to find a guru who tells the disciples, go in the middle of Russia and die there all together. Then they will march. Yes, wonderful instruction. Nowadays, we have any fool coming in and going, explain to me. Ha, ha, ha. 
So to be Guru in Kali Yuga, you have to be a really humble guy. If you would kindly accept, just maybe, if you would consider to get a glimpse of your own stupidity, it would be very beneficial for your spiritual progress. But, you know, it's just for your consideration. If you Divine Grace would like to maybe give it a little thought. I mean, really, you have to be very, very careful in Kali Yuga. Because fools don't understand, if they don't uh, submit themselves to Shastric guidance, we have to un submit ourselves to material guidance. And Maya, as a guru, that's pretty tough. To have Maya as an initiating spiritual master, that's a painful procedure. <laughs> Adibutik, Adidevik, Adiatmik. There is three kinds of seminars going on. You know, pain from other living entities, pain from our own body, and pain from supernatural powers. So to have a guru of that sort who will teach you through these three channels in an excessive form, uh, good luck. <laughs> but still, well, you know, what to speak of Hiranyakashipu, but even the little Hiranyakashipus, they never submit themselves to this. Never. That's a real demon. Demon will never learn. He will never submit himself. Even he is at the point of an absolute destruction. And it's so evident, it's like Mr. Hitler, his last, the last, last lecture from the bunker in Berlin, when the Russians were just around the corner already, blowing up the last house which was standing there. He said, we could have won the whole thing so easily. If these idiots, means the people who followed him, would actually understand what I'm talking about. So it's all their fault. Therefore, I will take now poison or shoot myself and die heroically. Yeah, the microphone will be close. Yeah? It's too little sound like this. Really? Okay. So, you know, this, this is the Lord, this is the morning man Never, never understanding that. First of all, that's what Prabhupada said, we should never forget where we came from. You know, from what a fallen state. You know, this is what Prabhupada moved to the island, passing by a golf course in the morning, on the morning walk, and he saw this old man sitting there, standing there, and playing golf. <laughs> Prabhupada said, what is this? What are they doing? <laughs> you know, he couldn't understand how man can spend the Java time, you know, to walk around over grass and try to put a little white ball into some distant hole by means of a stick, you know. So, uh, he was actually not so much concerned about the game, he was concerned about the age of these people. And the Buddhist explained to him the science of golf, you know. Prabhupada started to cry. He said, this is how they spend the last portion of their lives, which is in one sense like kind of a marathon for a spiritual life. It's like a sum bone of your life and of so many lives it comes together and aiming for that one point where you breathe the last breath and then it will be decided. Okay? So then where do we go from there? That's the, that's the graduation process. That's the ultimate graduation. That body what we think now and struggle with 24 hours a day, this is going to be just washed away. It's just so external. But the real essential momentum is, uh, okay, where do we go from there? And this is quite happy when you study the process of departure of the body, from the body, it's a, a serious point. This is pointed out, even a slightest fraction of a material desire will result in another material body. Even a slightest fraction, some little squeak, you know, like we always hear the squeaking in the mind. I wish, you know, me, I would get this. Why couldn't I get this? You know, you know. I could be so happy if I could get this. <laughs> and Maya always goes, but you got already so much. Yeah, but just a little bit. As there was a sticker on the Swedish cars I found, there were these little stickers. Try harder. We try harder. They were very proud, yes. We achieve so much, but we are trying harder. Go higher, faster, 
more complicated, better. Better means in material world actually more complicated. That's what they define to be better. It's so complicated, you can't understand anything anymore. That's really good. You know, yeah. And one fool creates some gizmo, another one creates an addition to that gizmo. It makes it even more complicated, and, and so complicated, and so complicated. And it's called touch screen. You know, you just, when the pictures are flashing, you just, wow, you can do so many things. <laughs> like previously, I mean, anything you pick up, anything which is touched by technology actually, got very, very complicated. Even a simple process, I can give you so many examples, like photography. Used to be a photograph, you just go, you know, adjust the sharpness. No, 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 now it's a uh, photograph is through the phone. Nobody ever thought in the past you can make photos with phones. Phones are for phoning, for the camera is for photography. No, we have to make a phone photography. And not only that. You cannot just make a photograph. You have to focus the phone somewhere on the roof and then you make a picture. How do you get to the roof? You buy a stick which you can fit the phone on and you go and you can look there and then you make a photo. You know, very distant photo from you. And, it's, and somebody said, no, 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 no. This stick must be uh, hydraulic. There has to be battery inside. You have to go and he goes, no, 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 this stick must have a propeller. And it will go. And somebody goes, well, uh, we will invent something else. There will be two propellers and three propellers. It's probably so nicely demonstrated when he was giving the first brand new Omega digital watch. That was really something those days. Watches with buttons on it. You know, with the number, like this. No, not this round thing which goes around. No, 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 just. 12 or 35. That was really something. I remember when these digital watches came up. Can you believe that? I can remember a time where to have a digital wristwatch was really something. That was really something. So Prabhupada said, what is this? And everybody said, what is a watch? And you, and you push this button, it shows you a date. And this button, it shows you a time. This is a stopwatch. And this thing goes like this. Prabhupada said, but my old watch had one button. This watch has four buttons, not very good. Why should I have four buttons when I can operate and know how late it is with one button? So I want my old watch back. You know, this is very logic. What do you need? And it comes to all channels. Even pseudo-academic education is the same thing. What do you need to know? We need to know what we have to know. That's it. Even Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna after speaking the whole Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says there is so much more to be known. I give you only a glimpse of my opulences. Just about me, about God. It's endless. But for you, this is what you have to know. There is this to be known. And one has to know what is to be known and not to know what is not to be known. And that takes a little intelligence. Intelligence means to simplify things, not to complicate things. What do we need? What the body needs in terms of eating, sleeping, mating and defending? You know how simple sex life is? Any monkey can do that. You know how simple eating can be? Even people develop really this to perfection. And in the sense of offering things to Krishna, yeah, it can, it's a great science. I have a deep respect for any qualified cook. I mean, it's amazing sometimes, it's like an artwork, what they do in these kitchens, you know. It's like Rang Yopam, probably just told me, it's just like, you come to an Indian household somewhere in Bengal or in Orissa, they'll go out there, they'll come, they're going to sit down, you know, prasadam, sit down. Because someone in India is communicated communicate through food. So, you know, so, very nice. And they give you popcorn, some kind of puffed up rice. It's Indian popcorn. And you go, thank you very much, that's very nice, especially as a preacher, so you have to do that. Thank you very much, you have to accept. No, 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 this was just to keep you busy for a period of approximately 15 to 20 minutes. And then the lady or the 
man who is welcoming you disappears in the kitchen. And you sit, sit there with this puffed rice and you go, hmm. Um, thank you for the person, why is everybody going? Within 15, 20 minutes, they come with eight to ten dishes out of that kitchen, cooked out of nothing. On a very basic fire arrangement. So he just made this guess and he said, it's all here. You know, then out comes the prasada. Well, you know, for us it's like magic. <laughs> oh, wow! You know, <laughs> yeah. So they are very expert. But still, when you look at the process, and this is very simple. You need some fire, you need some ingredients. Things grow around, pick up this. You reach it in the charitamrita, the preparations. This is all stuff which grows around. They go to the tree and they pick this leaf and they go to that and they pick that and they pick that and they, they don't go shopping. They just pick it, you know, like this, and they cook a fantastic feast. You know, in our way, couldn't be more complicated to buy a banana. Just to follow a destiny of a banana will take you around the globe. You know, the banana will be harvested somewhere one month ago, you know, or even more. Somewhere way, way, way in Bolivia, and shifted through, you know, incredible landscapes to a harbor where it will be completely green and stone hard, you know, unripe, shifted on a ship, you know, and there on the ship it will kind of rot a little bit more, you know, and it turns kind of yellow. It's actually not ripening; it's rotting. And then it will be unloaded in some harbor somewhere in Hamburg, in Germany. And then it will be shifted through whole Europe before you get it in Rema on a, you know, on a shelf. Sometimes they add a little snake or a little spider from Bolivia, you know. They open these banana boxes and there's some poisonous frog or some snake. It happens regularly in these places where they unpack the whole thing. <laughs> so, what a complicated way to eat banana, you know, everything you touch is, and people don't, people are running out of brain power, they cannot understand anymore. You buy some gizmo, the, the manual book is, is as big as the gizmo, you know, such a manual book and such a little phone. You know, before you read this, your brain is cooked and you still don't understand, still you push the wrong button, and still it will do something unpredictably, but well, what is this, you know. And then you have to take a counsel and you have to ask and just and that, and just, just for simple thing. So this is how we lose our idea of spiritual life. We get preoccupied because the function of Maya is to make the important unimportant and the really important, uh, the unimportant important. Maya is really good to turn it around. This is important. Everybody focus on this. Anybody go discussing? You know, it's a very important issue in Copenhagen. How many dogs should there be in Copenhagen? People have to vote, discuss, have a meetings. You know, our simple answer would be, who cares? Dogs and dogs, they live their lives. They have nothing to do with our lives. You know, yeah. What is the ritual concerning us? What is really important? Just materialist book. Blame what Prabhupada was sometimes criticized that he's dealing a lot with material issues. Speaks lots about sex life, which was in India especially upsetting. Swamiji is just very sex life. Some rasa, I'm not this. It's not a sadhu. Speaking about economy, speaking about Prabhupada through him, even some political things. You know, uh, like Prabhupada was in the airplane and he saw a Time magazine buying the, the airplane. And then in, there was a big title on the Time magazine, Crime, what to do with it? You know, because the, the, you know, the crime is increasing in America. Prabhupada just picked the title and his whole tour, wherever he came out of the airplane, welcomed by reporters and disciples, he started crying, what to do with it? And from there he developed a whole series of lectures, crying, what to do with it? Because we can talk about anything. 
you know. Do you like homosexuals? Yes, what to do with it? Do you like uh, sex? Yes, what to do with it? We can comment on anything. And there was a little concern about feminism and this kind of things. And this outrageous statements in the Shastra. Prabhupada gave up preaching to all that. With a female reporters, you know, didn't took four or five minutes. Just in a welcome speech, Prabhupada mentioned that yes, women are less intelligent and have a smaller brain. I mean, they were going ballistic. They were already getting ready on him on an airport before he came out of that airplane. Asking, what about women? But they are less intelligent. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you know, just upset. Even the devotees were thinking, this is a little bit. Cannot we choose at least another issue here, you know? Yeah, Prabhupada thought that uh, this is the Shastik thing, and that's how we're going to take it. Then I'm going to change and temper something. Of course, discrimination should be there, you know. Like, uh, you know, you don't put forward that, yes, Krishna said ultimately to Arjuna, kill them 